All right, so today we're going to be going over how you can look at your system of interest um, and consider doping it with electrons and holes, respectively, and then looking at its performance in terms of things like the Seebeck coefficient or the electrical conductivity as a function of temperature. So you'll be able to get plots like this, just to give you an idea. Um, <clears throat> so this is Seebeck coefficient as a function of temperature. This is electrical conductivity uh, as a function of temperature, obviously. And so that's the idea here. So if you really only care about getting this plot, I'm uploading the scripts. Feel free to just go to the GitHub and pull it, but I'll kind of explain to you what we are doing in the first place. So I ran the script just before starting this video. It only takes, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Um, and I'll walk you through what we're doing. So if you haven't run the interpolate command, you need to run that. <clears throat> that will give you basically the interpolation.bt2 file, which is needed for these next commands. Um, if you're confused about that, either go to my old videos or use the bootstrap to help command. And this is the one you're looking for. Or just take this script and uncomment this line. It's also fine. Um, so this does the interpolation for you. And then what we're going to do is we are going to um, tell Bootstrap 2 to dope our semiconductor, basically, using that interpolation.bt2 file that we get from this step up here. But I already have that, so it's not needed. We're going to do it over some range of temperatures. Here we just go to 300, from 300 to 800 by 50. And then this is the line that's different from the other videos, if you've watched those or if you've used Bootstrap 2 before. So if you've used Bootstrap 2 before, you know that when you run it in its kind of default integrate mode, um, what happens is you get a large range of chemical potentials um, and so and thereby uh, carrier concentrations. Um, and so that's not always what you want. So sometimes you just have a target carrier concentration, like you know in some experiment the carrier concentration was, you know, 2018 charge carriers or something like that per centimeter squared or whatever. Um, and so when that is the case, which is most of the time, I think, uh, this is the useful command to use. So basically we just tell it to dope at these temperatures at this concentration. We use minus, obviously we use minus the concentration for electrons. Uh, that makes a file and then what we do is we just copy it from the default file name to uh, something that specifies this is the file for electrons. And then we do the same thing with holes, just you'll note that this number here stays positive. Copy the output to something that tells us that this is for holes. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Now, um, what did I change? Okay, that's fine. Now, here is our plotting command. <clears throat> so, or our plotting script, I should say. More or less all we're doing is uh, some plotting info, size, font size, and all of that. Here's some info about the GPOC calculation. We don't actually need that for this. And then here's, here's the bulk of what we're doing. So basically we loop over electrons and holes, and then we read in each one of those files. This is why renaming them is important. We extract the relevant info from these, and then what we do is we plot in, um, in blue the holes and in red the electrons uh, in terms of their Seebeck coefficient. And for here, we're taking the Seebeck coefficient uh, to be just the sum of the diagonal components, uh, so the trace of the uh, Seebeck coefficient tensor, and then divided by 3. And we do the same thing for the conductivity, so if you need to change that, if you're doing with 2D systems, feel free to just modify those uh, in here. And then, um, yeah, pretty much all we're going to do now is just run this. And this will be a quick video um, because this is what you get. So what does a plot like this tells you? A plot like this tells you that your holes at low temperature basically are better at generating some uh, voltage potential difference uh, across the device as a function of you know, temperature up to this point, at which point the um, <clears throat> electrons are, are better. So doping basically carrier concentrations which are positive lead to um, a larger potential difference across this material at low temperature, but at high temperature it would be electrons uh, or negative charge carriers. 
And then similarly over here, we just see that the conductivity at all times is better for negative charge carriers. And this kind of information is useful, especially for the screening of materials, um, you know, from a computational point of view, where you're not sure which one of those things it will be. And this can be useful for implementation in hybrid devices and all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, that'll be pretty much it for this video. Just going to make this a quick one. I hope that uh, some of you find this helpful. You could, of course, also just come in here and plot the uh, power factor, take those S um, arrays, numpy arrays, the trace of them averaged, say, and then multiply it by this uh, trace of the sigma tensor averaged as well. And then you can get a, a sort of similar thing there um, to give you S squared sigma, if you care about that. And of course, if you have information about the um, lattice thermal conductivity, you can, you can plot that as well to get the figure of merit. But this is kind of a nice starting script to get you whatever it is you need uh, with regard to this. So I will wrap it up here. Um, say thank you for watching. Drop a comment if you are confused about anything. Um, and if not, then I hope you have a good day.